Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming today. We're delighted to welcome you all to the start of the year conference. Um, I am going to say a little bit more in a minute, but we want to actually start with the Bolton Hospital Choir. <laughs> Amazing CQC, but the staff engagement results are so impressive, really, really impressive as well, and the best thing about in Manchester, which is something to be really proud of for all of you. But having said that, I think we have got some massive challenges <coughs> to the user trust, and some of them come from within the population that we serve. So the demand for our services is rising exponentially, not just in Bolton, but across the whole of, of the UK. And it's a really confusing picture for patients and, and for residents. People don't really care whether it's health or social care. We come to try to help them when they're in crisis. And we have families, we certainly, when I worked in Wigan, we had families who were costing the system around half a million a year in what we call interventions. But at the end of that year, they were actually in a worse position than at the beginning of the year because the interventions weren't working. So it's not because people are doing the wrong things, but we're all approaching it slightly differently, coming from a different organisational perspective. But it's brilliant, again, that our Chief Exec, Jackie, is leading on integrating neighbourhood teams across Bolton, across the different communities that we serve, and trying to be really proactive and preventative in the way that we work with our residents, which is something that I'm really passionate about as well. So, I hope we have a fantastic day. Um, I'd really like us to nail down the how going to deliver our really exciting strategy that Sharon and the team have developed, you know, how are we actually going to do it, what specifically are we going to be doing differently as a trust into the future. So it's not I think it's um, a fitting um, start, I'm get these slides going to celebrate and yeah, again, once again, the CQC results, because that did demonstrate what fantastic position goes in this organisation. So becoming outstanding for well life was no new feat, that's a lot of work, isn't it? Um, but it's the effort through the organisation of care and attention to staff and to the services so that the patients get the best out of them that they So to become, you know, I was incredibly proud to, to see the organisation achieve that, um, as well as improving on all the indicators in good. In 2016, there were some requiring improvement areas that didn't affect the overall aggregated uh, result. But in all those areas, there have been improvements, all of them are now good. And there were some outstanding practices um, recorded by CQC, particularly in the domain of care, as well as across the board from that way. So that was a, a great indictment to, to the staff and in, in the trust, and particularly to its leadership. So um, well done to you all. But we've been busy over the last five years investing in the trust as well, which I think is um, really important to do. Because you will remember that we did have some financial difficulties going back five, six years ago now. And the initial investments in the trust went into the risks, into the infrastructure, into the things that the trust hadn't been able to invest in um, over the previous years. Um, but we've been building on that. So some of these areas were areas of risk to us. There were areas of risk to our patients and areas of risk to our staff. And we've got some really nice environments now uh, to go from quite antiquated buildings that weren't fit for purpose, weren't fit to get the best outcomes from our patients, and certainly not the right environment for our staff. So, more successes. So we won back that contract for the 5 to 19, which makes that we've got the 0 to 19 contract. And as a trust who puts it specialism in terms of women's and children's services, that's incredibly important. We want to be um, shaping that community, responding to that community, particularly it's so hard being um, a child and an adolescent and all those pressures that um, many hold now that are creating lots of difficult and complex environments for our children who are our obviously our adults community of tomorrow. So those who are in the room, and it is so many of you actually have contributed in one shape or, or another to the Council Pathways, well done. Because not only do we always get really, really good marks on patient experience for cancer, um, and we've been in the top 10% of the country for several years now, but we also deliver in terms of outcomes uh, in a way that, that you'd be proud of. And you know, one day is one day too long for a person who's facing cancer or has cancer. There's a new AE building we were able to create a, a handover area for ambulances. That type of turnaround time is just, it's just incredible. It's the, on, for those people like me who look at ambulance turnarounds every day, 
on the fourth was the country. We're often green, often the best trust in the way to Manchester for delivering ambulance turn around, turn around. Which means that those ambulances can get to the next person um, quicker. So it's uh, a great achievement. So I'm really, really pleased that we can see now the rollout, some of which is fairly unique to tap on, which I love, that tap on, tap off, all the, um, you know, in terms of the security arrangements um, for, for this and information governance, that's fantastic and so easy to use. But the rolling out of the OBS, um, I know it's not quite there yet, but Malinko is certainly going to be um, a, a great advance for our community systems. Um, and our climate EPR, and of course our total EPR is coming in rule. We're getting ready for uh, September, we'll be able to deliver the trusts, um, certainly the hospital sites, the uh, EPR system. And then I know that we're in the throes of designing the community systems, but once all that's joined up, we'll be able to realise so much more in terms of patient pathways and the speed of them and the efficacy of them when we can talk to each other digitally. I know that's what you're always saying is it feels really touching distance now. And then back to our people, we wouldn't be able to achieve the outcomes um, that we have, all that good, uh, good outcomes you've seen on the slides and on here, without fantastic people. And they require investment too. And I'm really pleased to see that people have been supported, they've been developed, um, skills developed. It's a never ending process of keeping people developed um, and keeping people wanting to do more and able to do more. So to get the highest score in the country or in, the, in that bracket for I am enthusiastic about my job. Well, I couldn't ask for anything more because people who actually want to come to work. And they do. And they come and do great things every day. So then finally I just was a talk about going age, I guess. Um, but some of you will um, be aware of that already. But that I think will take us just that um, step further in terms of not waiting every year to see a staff survey and just seeing where we need to work and what areas we need to focus on. But doing that live, just being able to do that every um, every month with the set of randomised red anonymous um, surveys from our staff so that we can keep refining our, our delivery in terms of staff engagement. And so looking ahead, obviously I've mentioned already there's the EPR to look forward to. They do, it won't be easy. It'll be a real cultural challenge for many of us, including me. But we'll get there. We'll, we'll certainly get there and we will realise those benefits. And, and investing really quickly in the infrastructure for training is going to be a really important market for us. The collaboration with the university has been fantastic anyway. And um, so many of our, um, our placements, well, the placements that you see and you support in terms of our clinical placements, be they nurses, therapists, scientists, etc. Many are going to involve universities. But most of all, I'm excited about the integration agenda. So I'm going to do my damn list until I retire. Um, to get to make sure that that's embedded and make sure that we have proper systems and pathways that really do talk to us. So the integration agenda is probably one of the most exciting things that I think we're going to do over the next five years. Well, we talked about two significant things already this morning. Um, Donna's talked about the challenges that we face, have faced and lie ahead. And Jackie's talked about the uh, ambition for this organisation moving forward in the five year strategy. So we've got a challenge on our hands about how do we keep doing better, faster with less. And we've also got a challenge on our hands about how do we get a glossy strategy and take the words and make them reality. And that comes through a very simple thing and that's leadership. And I look around this room and everybody in this room is a leader, whether you think so or not. We've got a variety of, of people in here of all different grades. But everybody that does a job in the NHS is a leader in one way or the other. So we've got that leadership challenge for us. So the first leadership challenge is we make a decision. Are we going to step up or are we going to step away? And I look around this room, knowing most of the other do, and I know that you all want to step up to it and we're ready for the challenge and we can do it. But to be the best we can possibly be, we've got to think about and really invest in leadership of ourselves. A lot of the time we think that's an overindulgence about spending and investing in us. But if we do want to be the best we can possibly be, we've got to do that. And it's about how then we develop the leaders of the future, the people we're going to pass the legacy on to in a few years' time. One of the, one of the most important things we're going to be doing over the next couple of years is around aligning our digital strategy and the implementation of our electronic patient record. And a 
digital, we can't underestimate how much it's going to touch our lives, and touch the lives of our patients and our population. We have um, tried to make sure that the strategy that we're building reflects the digital agenda. Um, and by September this year, we will be rolling out the like, education like that to all wards, and we'll be starting the training for that quite soon. So it's important that as many staff as possible are aware of it and have had a chance to influence it. And that's why the team wanted to make sure that um, we, we talked about that today. But also, I've shown it first because it is one of the key um, enablers for our strategy and for the work that we want to do. So everything I've talked to you about now over the next 10 minutes is underpinned by a really different way of using digital technology. Now, we're coming from a place in Bolton where we perhaps haven't used digital technology as much, but because of the strength of our ICT, we're moving very, very quickly. And we, and we are going to be able to take in some places soon. And we've got the great infrastructure to build that. But a lot of that depends on you as, as the teams who are delivering care out to patients and making sure that you feel confident and capable to be able to use that equipment. So the vision for our organisation is we want to be recognised as an excellent provider of health and care and a great place to work. It's really important that for our population we're the best provider that we can be and for our staff we're the best employer that we can be. And those two things were things that came out really strongly from all of the conversations that we had. So we've made that front and central in, in our vision. We've worked on um, six ambitions that we have as an organisation that we will be using those ambitions to filter down through the organisation into your divisional plans, into your PPPs, to make sure that um, we're all delivering against the same ambitions.